Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back with episode 45 of the Humble Mechanic podcast. Today we're going to be talking about working on modified cars at the dealership. You know, there's not a ton of modified cars, you know, beyond maybe replacing the wheels or an exhaust or an intake that really come through the dealership. But from time to time we do get them, and for the most part it's no big deal. There are some times where it, <laughs> it can be kind of a pain in the butt or, you know, an issue pops up here or there, but I like to keep those to a minimum if I can. So there are some really cool things about modified cars coming into the dealership. One, it's cool. It's different. It gets us out of that little rut of, you know, 14 beige Passats in a row. No offense if you have a beige Passat. I drive a gray Passat, so. So it's nice to just break up a little bit of that monotony from the normal everyday, you know, change the oil on 100 Passats. A lot of times the customers are really cool too. We had a fellow with the... R32 converted Mark IV Golf, that just nicest guy you could ask to talk to, and uh, was more than happy to tell us all about his car, so that was really cool. And you know, for the most part, dealer techs are also enthusiasts, so we like to see that kind of stuff too. When you've put a ton of time or a bunch of money into modifying a car and done a really nice job, we love seeing it. And I'll be honest, if you haven't put any money and did a really crappy job, we like seeing that too because, you know, it gives us all kind of a good laugh. Or we look at it and go, yikes, that's going to be dangerous. A lot of times that comes with the way people install their uh, aftermarket amplifiers on their cars and they'll route the uh, power cable through the door or uh, under the fender or something. You know, really dangerous, honestly. Just know that if you do that and you bring your car somewhere, they're probably going to make fun of it. So it's really, it is really nice just to see that little bit of a breakup throughout the day. There are times where it does become a problem, and it really depends on a few things. It depends on why you're bringing your car in, and honestly, it depends a lot on who gets your car. So if you bring your car into the dealership and don't have a technician that normally works on it, it just kind of goes into the pool of technicians, and whoever is available will do the work. Now, if you come in and I happen to pull your car and you have a problem, I don't necessarily care, but the guy that works next to me, he might have a big problem with it. He may not want to mess around with anything that's been modified. And a lot of times, again, it depends on why you've brought your car there to begin with. Working on a modified car at the dealership can mean more work for us. So let's say you have, a, just even for an oil change, and your car slammed on the ground. Well, it's going to take more work for us to get your car up in the air to do the oil change. A lot of times that'll make, <laughs> that'll make a technician a little bit fussy about having to, uh, you know, spend maybe an extra 10 minutes getting your car up in the air in order just to do a simple oil change. It really can throw off the rhythm of doing a service as well. So. I know I've talked about it in a flat rate video. It's built on repetition. So every technician has a system of the way they do things. If I'm doing a tune-up service, I do the service the exact same way every single time. Having to work on a modified car may throw that off. If you have an intake on it, your car's lowered and you have different wheels, now I'm thinking about that all, the whole time instead of just going through my steps as I would normally doing the service. Now that's a really minor nitpicky thing, I know, and it's not a big deal and it may only add five or six minutes to a service, but you have to remember that that five or six minutes that I'm spending on this car is five or six minutes less time that I have to do something else. The big concern though, you know, the, the maintenance thing is not a terribly big deal, but the big concern is when it comes in for a problem. And a lot of that is electrical work and diagnostic work like drivability. Um, the drivability one is the one we see more often than anything. That can come in a number of forms. That could come in the form of a vehicle's been lowered and now they have a suspension noise. Well, it's tough to isolate a suspension noise with an aftermarket set of suspension parts, especially if the dealership or, you know, who knows installed the part or who knows the quality of the part. Was it a cheap eBay thing or was it a, you know, a really high end set of H&R springs? So I think that's where a lot of techs get kind of tripped up is when your car's clearly been modified and you have a problem related to that modification. And suspension one is, is a really easy one to get. Sometimes it's no big deal. You know, we can take the car on a quick ride and diagnose a, a rattle or, you know, hey, you left your wheel loose when you did your springs, no problem. The issue comes in even more so when the vehicle's under warranty. Let's say you lower your car and now you have a clunk when you turn left. I look at your car, clearly it's lowered. Um, even if it's not that much, clearly it's a lowered vehicle. I go drive it, I duplicate the clunk, and let's say I find a bad sway bar link. Well, that may 100% be related to the, the springs being on the car. So warranty's not gonna cover that kind of thing because it's clearly related or clearly in the very same area as to your modification. 
Where it gets dicey though is with electrical work and diagnostic work that revolves around modules. So on the more modern Volkswagens, you can go in and you can change all kinds of information with a scan tool like VADCOM. You can change, you know, make your windows roll down with the remote or a million and a half other things, a ton of stuff that I don't even know about. The problem is, is that a lot of people will read on forums, hey, if you change this bit or change this byte, your car will do this. Well, they go in and they change it and they've also wind up changing something else and now their car's all tweaked out. So now before a tech can fix it, we have to go back, we have to figure out what was done, what was changed, and sort of unwind what they did and then re kind of reboot everything and, and start over from scratch. At the dealership, it's not too bad because we can online code some modules, but if it's you know so far out that there's no coming back, it just takes time and you have to go through each individual thing, turn things on, turn things off, and basically trial and error it until you get it right. So tech tip, if you're modifying your car and changing things on VADCOM, record your reading before you change it. That way you can always go back and set it to where it was. A lot of that comes into play too when you're trying to diagnose check engine lights or you know, engine related drivability, not necessarily suspension drivability, with tuned ECMs. Um, I ran into a couple of times where the ECM I thought was tuned, uh, the customer said it wasn't, we went round and round and round. Turns out the ECM was tuned. The customer didn't tell us the truth. And now we're stuck where, you know, maybe I've spent three quarters of a day trying to diagnose a random issue and warranty won't pay for it. The customer doesn't want to pay for it. So I just kind of get stuck in the middle of it. And I think that's where technicians really get mad about working on modified cars. Because I'll be honest, there's a lot of customers that don't tell the truth about the car, whether it's modified or not. So when you're dealing with someone where you're skeptical of whether they're telling the truth to you or not, or you know it's been modified and they're saying it's not, or it, they may not even know. Maybe they bought the car used and the previous owner modified it, and now you get it. They didn't modify it, so they're telling the truth, but you know, you're know you you're still skeptical and you're having to unwind a bunch of stuff that someone else did, or deal with like a non-factory um, ECM. And that may not be a big deal. Whenever I'm diagnosing, let's say a check engine light, I have kind of a baseline of what I expect the ECM to see from various sensors in the car. I have a baseline of what, you know, most airflow meters will read, what most injector pulse widths read, what most oxygen sensors read, the voltage form. And when you start tuning things and changing these mappings, these readings could change. So let's say if I look at an airflow meter and it's at three and a half grams per second, I say that's good. And then I look at a tuned car and it's at four grams per second. I say that's a little high, but because of the tune, it's normal. So again, that's where dealership techs kind of get tripped up in that because we just don't have the information about the tune like we do on the factory setting. The other thing is all of our labor times are built on vehicles that are in factory condition. So like I mentioned before about putting the car up on the lift when it's slammed on the ground, a lot of times we don't get paid anything for that. So we're spending 10 extra minutes to raise a modified car just to get underneath it to do an oil change. And that basically means we're losing time on doing that service. For the most part, that's not a terribly big deal um, because sometimes it works to my advantage, really, especially with a lot of uh, aftermarket intakes where it's easier to do the work because I don't have to fight with getting the airbox out or anything. Those FSI ones are the worst and the two fives, whoever designed that. But uh, anyway, just a small, small rant about the FSI engine covers and the uh, 2.5 liter engine covers. But if you're bringing your car into the dealership and you've been modified, you know, part of you has to almost expect to pay a little bit extra. You spend $300 on an intake, spending an extra 10 bucks on an oil change or something, for example, uh, shouldn't really be that big of a deal. I guess for, from a customer standpoint, one of the most important things I think I can tell you guys is just be honest about it. I would much rather you come, on, come in and say, hey, I got this problem, my car's been tuned, here's what I've done, here's all the information, fix it. At least now I know. At least I don't have to spend, you know, 30 minutes screwing around, checking stuff to go, oh, crap, his ECM's tuned or whatever. Um, just be honest. You're more likely to get someone to help you out in the dealership setting, especially if you're talking right to the tech, if you're 100% honest with them rather than 100% dishonest and lying to their face. Because I've had that happen too, where I know the car's tuned, I know it's been modified, and the customer is, again, standing there right in my face telling me they've never done anything to the car, and I know they've owned it since it was new. 
it'll help me diagnose the car faster. And again, that's what it all boils down to is getting your car diagnosed faster and for the least amount of money for anyone possible. Now, there's some dealerships that are very modified car friendly, um, where if you had a problem and you know it's not 100% related to the modification, they don't care. That's how I am. If you want to lower your car on the ground, slam it on the frame. I don't really care. Just don't expect that if you have a suspension noise for anything to be covered under warranty. But if you have your car slammed on the ground and let's say your water pump starts leaking, well, odds are the water pump leaking has nothing to do with the suspension. I don't care. I'm going to fix the water pump. Now, like I mentioned a minute ago, you might have to pay a little bit extra for us to, you know, work around your modified suspension. But unless it's real slammed on the ground, <laughs> I don't care. Um, you know, we don't report things like that to Volkswagen or any other manufacturer or any extended warranty. Because again, unless it's 100% related, no question about it, I don't care. If you modified your ECM and that tune burns one of the drivers in the ECM and keeps your cooling fan on all the time, that's 100% related to the tune. That's not going to be covered under warranty. But if you modify your ECM and a rear caliper starts leaking, I don't care. I'm going to fix the caliper under warranty. You go about your day and, and you know, keep on driving and having fun in your car. Again, it, it kind of all boils down to what it is, what's going on, what technician you get and what dealership you take it to on whether from a customer end you're going to have a, a positive experience. And from a technician end, again, all I can ask is just please be honest about it. And one last thing, just because your car's not modified when the time you bring it in doesn't mean we don't already know that it was modified at some point. So this came up on an issue with a diesel particulate filter where the car had been modified to the stars. They took a bunch of stuff off, brought it in. Well, they had the DPF issues, but... Um, we knew the car had been modified because there was pictures of it everywhere. <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind too. You know, if you spend a bunch of time and money modifying your car, you can't rely 100% on a factory warranty to fix every issue that you're going to have. So the solution is wait till your car's not under warranty anyway, and then modify the hell out of it and and have a ball with it. You know, I think modified cars are cool. I got a VR6 uh, cabby swap sitting right behind the camera here. So it's something I'm into. It's something a lot of guys at the dealership are into. It's something a lot of Volkswagen techs are into. So we think it's cool. I think everybody just has to have very realistic expectation about what happens when you have a modified car and you bring it into the dealership. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. This is one I'd love to know your thoughts on. Modified cars at the dealership or not at the dealership? Post your thoughts in the comments section below. Hey, if you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can subscribe on YouTube or on the blog. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, HumbleMechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. It was too early for a beer, so I'm still sipping on coffee today. <laughs>